Hey again guys and welcome back. I've got some mail in front of me so it's time for another mailbag. First one up is by far the one I am the most excited about. It's uh, one that was sent to my PO box. Uh, so this is the address if you want to send me something. I also have an Amazon wish list in the description below. But this was sent by Pile of Stuff and if you don't know about his channel in the description will be a link to his channel. You should definitely be checking out. Uh, ignore the typos. I'm an idiot. I don't think so, but uh, let's see what he was talking about. Well, that's a challenging one. Seems like there's a note. Oh, I don't know what this is. Is that it? That's it. Okay. I genuinely don't know what is in here. I can see like it's a... Uh, there's an Atmel processor there. Um, a long time ago you sent me your first kit. Yep. It was a fun little build. I'd like to return the favor. But I'm not really into all that CAD stuff, that's fine. Not everyone is. This hobby is so big that there are tons of things to do in it. There's no way you can do it all. So instead, I'm sending you a little kit designed by another fellow Canadian. Uh, this is the Breadboard Buddy in Arduino Uno clone kit from the Universal Solder in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Um, it features a full-size DIP ATmega329, but the entire thing fits to Arduino Nano form factor, including the pinout. Uh, build instructions if you need them are here. Enjoy with a beverage of your choice. Well, that's pretty freaking awesome. Thanks a lot, pile of stuff. Uh, let's zoom into this and take a look at what he sent. We're putting up this little anti-static bag now. I'm going to try to keep this in frame, and I know usually when I zoom in, stuff doesn't stay in frame, but I'm going to try. So, first things first, there's a... It's upside down. Yeah, Dave Jones will say all the electrons will fall out. AT Mega 328P. Okay. So I think that's his typo. He said 329, but come on. If you're an idiot for making a typo, you should see the stuff I do on this channel. I uh, got a couple of pin headers. Here's the board, and holy crap, it's not kidding, huh? This is going to be really compact. It's almost the same size as the chip. That's really cool. Let's see, I almost had it out of frame again. There's a crystal resonator. Yeah, 16 megahertz. Um, a set of pins, I'm guessing for programming up here. That's for your um, sort of your serial uh, interface thing. And uh, a couple of LEDs, a couple of resistors, a couple of uh, capacitors. And that's it. That's amazing. So this will be a neat little kit to put together. And uh, I thank you very much, Pile of Stuff, for sending it to me. Next one up is this one here, which is fairly large and fairly heavy, and uh, has been eaten by the postal dog or something. I don't know. Ordered it March 5th, got it March 11th. It was super quick, $7.50. But there are five items in here. Raspberry Pi Arduino. Looking forward to serving you in the future. Okay. And here we go. You know what these are yet? You should. Most of you should. Not everyone, though. I understand. These are... Ooh. Ooh, this, that's really cool. They're ceramic. These are um, thermal electric coolers, I guess. Tech or thermoelectric generators, TEGs, or um, Peltier modules. That is really cool. So how these work is that you um, run a current through the wires here, and one side of this will become ice cold, and the other side will become uh, toasty hot. And the reverse is true if you cool one side and heat the other, it'll generate a current. And so it's technology like this that are on uh, space probes 
in order to uh, keep them powered in the deep vacuum of space far away from the sun, what they do is they have a little uh, nuclear generator and the nuclear generator generates heat for the next, you know, whatever, 50 years. And the vacuum of space has, there's, they put radiator blocks on the other side to radiate out the uh, heat, cool it on with the vacuum of space. And so basically the differential and temperatures will keep generating electricity for those probes. Uh, I felt like doing some experiments with these things. So I definitely decided to get some. Um, I could try powering it up, but I don't have any uh, heat sinks to put on it. And I don't really have any method of controlling the heat just for this mailbag video. So I'm going to power it up, make sure it works. Um, but I think we're going to have to power it down pretty quickly after. So here is the setup. There's my power supply. I have it set for 12 volts uh, with a current limit of 500 milliamps. So I'm going to be running about uh, six watts through this system. Um, actually, I'll switch it to current there. I've got the tech here, which I can connect directly to it. So I can go black on black and red on red. There we go. And then um, you get to see how chilly it is in my basement. This multimeter seems to be playing up on me. So I'm not sure how accurate this one's going to be, but we should still see a difference. If I touch that onto the substrate. Yeah, see, it seems to settle in. So I'm going to tape both these probes onto the substrate, one on each side. Nope, that was a disaster. You can't really cut this uh, polyimid tape just by stretching it like you can uh, packing tape. All right, so one probe will go down onto one side of the substrate. So there we go. And then we'll grab the second probe, put it on the other side. There we go. And then just going to cut the tape. And there we go. So now we have probes on both sides. And I just touched it with my hands, so the temperature is going up a bit. But I think we should see a difference in temperature soon. Now keep your eye on the ball because I'm going to be flipping this on and probably off very quickly. Yeah, this meter here I think is giving up the ghost. I'll have to see what's wrong with the current side of it, but right now it seems to be somewhat accurate. So I'm going to give it. So it's current limiting, definitely, at uh, 2 volts and 500 milliamps. And we should be seeing a differential. One side is definitely climbing. Thirty degrees, sixteen degrees. Yeah, maybe this uh, thermoelectric cooler or thing is not quite. Maybe it needs more current. So let's. Uh... Oh, something happened. It said zero current. Oh, I see. I think my connections here are a little bit screwy up there. All right, you know what? We're going to crank the current up. We're going to go to 2 amps if we get there. There we go. We got one side at 45 degrees, 50 degrees. Oh yeah, 9, 10 degrees. That's a weird feeling. One side is hot. Wow, I don't even know how to process that. Wow.
one side is hot and the other side is cool. So that's uh, that's very interesting. Um, obviously, this is going to work better when I can get heat sinks onto either side. But until then, this is kind of the only thing I can do. And now the whole thing is permeating with heat. Yeah, so the whole thing is becoming warm now. And for me to get a large differential of temperatures again, I would have to uh, put heat sinks on them and repower it up. So definitely look in the future for that because I'm excited to try to um, sandwich this between some heat sinks, get some fans going, and see how cold we can get this thing. But yeah, I also want to try the obverse. I want to try to cool one side with a flow of water and heat up the other one with maybe solar energy and see if we can get a little bit of a current going somewhat constantly. On to the next one. Next one up is this one which says toggle switch 20 and an arrow. I was ordered, this was ordered February 2nd, got in March 19th, $2.34. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I thought they were going to be. Let's take a closer look. So what we have here is a switch, but it's kind of a special switch. In fact, uh, I had to look quite hard to find this kind of switch on eBay. So this is a four position switch, or sorry, three position switch. Yeah, one, two, and three and it is dual pole so that means that um, these here or I should say this pin here is going to be connected to either this pin this pin or this pin and same with that one this one will be connected to either this one this one or this one depending on where it is so it's a dual pole uh, triple throw switch I guess that's what it's called or is it triple pull dual throw I never remember but anyways um, this thing is for the LM317 um, power supply kit that I have been designing and I needed a switch to select either 3.3 5 volts or 9 volts while leaving the other components out of circuit and so this kind of switch would do that which is great however I think I'm gonna go a different direction and that project is coming um, and I'll show you why I'm going a different direction when the time comes um, but mainly it's because I want to have a new board to send as gifts and I think this here is okay but we'll see we'll see if I can find a, a had for this in KiCad and and see you know what I decide to go do I go this way or my next idea you'll have to stick around the channel be subscribed and see nothing much more to see here let's go on to the next one next one up is this one um, this one had two stickers one on top of each other they do that sometimes and it makes it really hard to figure out what was inside but none of the stickers had um, information matching my purchases so I'm just guessing the fact that it says expansion board module and there's two items in here my best guess is that uh, it was an item I, I bought on January 29th got it March 18th and three dollars and ninety two cents was my best guess let's see if I'm right I genuinely have no idea what's in here my best guess was absolutely Correct. Ooh, interesting. Let's take a closer look at these. So what these guys are, um, they are automotive dome light bulbs, but they, oh, interesting. But they replace your traditional dome light, which may look like this. Uh, it's a bulb with the two kind of pins on it. Or it may look like this, which is, I think, a T10, something like that, T a T5, I forget with one of these, a Cobb LED that works on roughly 12 volts. Uh, I can see there's a 3M pad here to stick it to the inside. And these two were supposed to be identical. They were bought from the same seller at the same time and you saw they were in the same bag. 
but yet they're different. One's in a retail package, the other one is not. Um, one of them has a metal surround and the pad pre-applied, the other one does not. And I can tell by the color of the phosphor that they're different types. They're different white types, I guess. That is super interesting. Um, obviously, we're going to power them both up. But the interesting thing about this is they're universal. So no matter what kind of car you have, um, either you put this bulb base in or this one, which is multiple sizes, uh, you just have to be careful if you do plug this into your car and it doesn't work the first try, um, your car has a standard bulb which doesn't care about polarity so you may have to flip it 180 because these LEDs definitely do care about polarity. So let me set up the breadboard and see if we can get these things powered up and see if they're bright and see if there's a color difference. I have my power supply here set to 13.6 volts which is a uh, it's a reasonable voltage for your alternator to be outputting while your car is running. So picture um, this situation would be your car is running and you open your driver's door to um, put something in the trunk. Uh, then your dome light comes on. So that would be the type of voltage that uh, you would see. Um, I'm going to press OK here. And I'm just going to pop this first one in, which will be a warmer weight than this one. And these are polarized. so should work like this. Immediately nothing. It lit for a second, I think. Absolutely nothing. Uh, okay. It could be these wires too, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's try the other one. Nothing, so it's gotta be, it's gotta be these wires. Yeah, there we go. What is wrong with my setup these days? So this one's nearly blue in how cold white it is. Oh, come on. Don't do me like this, baby. Okay, you know what? I've had enough of this. Okay, so I replaced the offending uh, spring clamp here, uh, with actually, which actually has wires, I think, melted in? I, I don't really know. Um, if you have a choice between these guys and the fake Wagos, go with the fake Wagos. But um, here we go. Let's turn this on. Come on. So, yeah, that is blue. I'll have to say, that's not white. That's blue. Hmm. I'm not sure, not sure like that. It uh, pulls about uh, three to 400 milliamps at 13.6 volts. Did it get hot? No, like barely warm. And this one here, there we go. That one's white for sure. So I got one blue and one white, which is unfortunate because I wanted two white. Darn it. Maybe gonna open a claim, but I think I got these from Alice One One Zero Nineteen Eighty Three. So um, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, contact them and see what they say. But this one looks very nice. Is it getting hot? No, it's good. it's like warm. And this one only pulls about uh, two hundred milliamps compared to the other one. I'm literally about to. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to move up my output connection project for this thing to a lot sooner than I thought. For now though, let's go on to the next one. And the last one up, um, it says color ring resistance, but I have no idea what it is. It came in on March 19th. I can tell you that much, but I couldn't match any of the numbers, whether it be on this sticker or the sticker on the underside to anything. So. 
I mean, again, this will be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. These are just resistors. Okay, I did order resistors. Uh, I ordered a whole bunch of them. Uh, so I guess this is only two of them. But again, these are for the LM317 project, if you've been following that. Um, these are colored green, blue, black, black, brown. So that's five, six, zero with a zero multiplier. So it's 560 ohms. So I guess I didn't have any of those. And these here are colored uh, orange, orange, black, black, brown. So um, orange is three, three, I think. So three, three, zero with a zero multiplier. So zero, zero is after that. So it's 330 ohms. So here we go. I've got some resistors for the project, which I can add to my cache of resistors. But unfortunately, these aren't too interesting for a mailbag video. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. I think I paid a uh, dollar thirty Canadian for a hundred of each, so one thirty, one thirty. And this pile of electronics bits and bobs makes up today's mailbag video. Make sure you check the description below this video to have a link to Pile of Stuff's channel. If you haven't been there and haven't subscribed, it's time to do that now. While you're at it, might as well subscribe to this channel. Also in the description, you'll find a link to my Patreon page. I want to thank my Patreons for their support, as always. It's because of them that these videos are possible, and I have this awesome stuff to make cool projects for everyone to watch. For the rest of you, whether you don't want to support or can't support, just watching actually really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and lets this channel be shown to more people. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching.